Kia ora guys, welcome to this week's Wholesome Half Hour. As always, I am Mackenzie. Kia ora, I'm Sarah. How's it going? Uh, and on this week's episode, we thought we would lighten it up a little bit. Some of the stuff that we've been talking about in the past couple of weeks has maybe been a little bit heavier, not so wholesome. Maybe, mm. no, it is wholesome, but... Um, you know what else lightens life up? Easter eggs. It's not Easter yet. Easter's actually quite far away. I've seen but hot cross buns in the supermarkets like weeks ago, and I was like, they that's so offensive. At they show up on the touch Yeah. Screen. I think it's a Mac Cafe thing, but it shows up on the like, touch mm. screen. I don't know how to feel about that. I'm sure people who are like avid fans of hot cross buns enjoy an extended hot cross bun period of time. I only like chocolate hot cross buns. Interesting, because I detest them. Why? I just think I don't like chocolate and bread. Like I don't like Nutella on toast. Like I don't mind Nutella, but I don't like Nutella on toast. I'm allergic to Nutella, so that's not a good point of reference. So what, what like? I like hot chocolate hot cross buns. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I just don't do like bread and chocolate for some reason because on their own, I'm big fans of them. But like, just not. Have you ever, mm, do you like muffins? What kind? Like sweet muffins? Yeah. Eh, they're not like what um, I would reach for. What a weird choice. How's it going? Hi, are, you, are you filming? Yeah. We are filming. Uh, uh, welcome to the Half and Half Hour. My name is Kenzie, my name is Sarah, and uh, welcome to NCHU's Don't Fail. Yeah. <laughs> now look kids, don't worry, NCA doesn't mean <laughs> Very well, <laughs> bye. Do <laughs> you want to drag a chair over or are you good? Yeah. Doing welcome to the show down here. Wow. <laughs> And we're back. Yeah, we're back. Welcome back. We fixed. Welcome back. Um, Is it even a? Oh, it's not even in the oh, shot. You can't see it at That's all. That's what I oh, see. Oh wow! I, I thought you could see it. I thought you could see it a little shot. bit. Um, for so anyone that we we usually have a thing that sits on the wall there, and when the door closed, it knocked it off, and that was that loud crash. So that's good. Yeah. Um, that oh, was real mean. Um, but now we also have Matthias, so that's good. That's fun. Uh, we thought on this episode we would be sort of lightening it up a little bit and we asked you guys on our IG poll um, what were the things that you valued about education and so um, less of like a Q&A type thing but maybe like bringing up some points that you know um, you had never considered before or something that maybe um, uh, you'd not like taken, taken advantage, like taken for granted sorry, but yeah. like just didn't Realize Didn't re realise the, the full impact. value of, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, I mean, before we get into like what other people have sort of said, mm. um, like, do, do you, what is probably one of the biggest things that you value, but you can't look at everyone else's oh, answers. sorry. Sorry, what's the question? Like, what, what is it that you think you value most about education, or like, why do you Education or like, skill? Learning. Education. Learning. Like... Um, I guess like... I don't know, you sort of slowly realise over time that like everything, like almost everything in your life is like a result of like compounding previous learning experiences. Mm -hmm. So like whether that be like career skills, um, like the strength of your relationships with your friends, like all of that is like the result of like compounding like learning throughout time. Mm. And like you're always learning and like learning isn't just about what you do at school. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. Like for me, like a lot of the, I don't know, a lot of the things that I consider probably the most valuable stuff I've learned is stuff that I've learned like on my own and I've like taken the initiative to be like, I want to learn this. Like I'm going to like, I've got two hours this afternoon. I'm going to like go on YouTube and like watch a video and then do something about it. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. What about you, Matthias? What do I value about learning? Yeah. Or what do you value most, I think? Or will the mics be all good? Or, yeah. Okay. Cool. Sweet. Cool. 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 Um, I think what I've been thinking about recently is that um, the landscape of work that our generation is going to do um, after school, after tertiary education, is changing much more rapidly than anyone could ever anticipate. Anyone that says that they know what jobs will be around in 2050 um, are either lying or stupid. Um, <laughs> Probably both. <laughs> so, um, there's just no way to predict that sort of thing with you know the rapid technological change and stuff like that. And so what is probably most important for the future of work is the ability to learn 
hard stuff quickly. Yep. And I think that that is what learning teaches you to do, and that's what school ought to teach us to do. It doesn't always do that, but um, mm. learning in general is an essential skill for the modern world, and I think that that's what maybe not what I value the most about it, but it's what I've been thinking about. Then what most would, recently. What would be what you valued most then? Um, I think maybe the freedom that it gives humans. Like, learning gives you opportunity, as Saren said, um, not just job opportunities, but also opportunities to make new friends, new connections. Um, if anyone wants a really good book recommendation, uh, Educated by Tara Westover is about a woman that liberated herself through education. Um, really, really eye-opening read. Oh, nice. Cool. What yeah. about you, Mackenzie? I guess, I don't know, I think for me, like, it's less the, I think, I think it is less of the, like, bigger impact. Sorry, I think mine's a bit more selfish than your guys. But, like, I think genuinely, like, learning and becoming better educated has made me a better person for so many reasons. Mm. And, like, I could get into the psychology of certain parts of it, um, which I won't for the sake of everyone. But, like... I'd be interested. Well, okay, so there are studies and stuff that have been done that show that those with higher education, those who are more educated, those who are more informed, are more open to new experiences. They are less discriminatory. They are less... Um, that's a word. I didn't say anything. I didn't say anything. I saw your face. We spend enough time together that I knew... contemplating in my, in my mind. <laughs> um, and, it, and it's because... People who continue to educate themselves, regardless of whether or not that is within a system, an institution, like, and education and learning doesn't have to be refined to, or re, uh, refrained, sorry, to uh, an institution or system, like you said, Siren. Um, and I think it's, I feel like it's genuinely, in a lot of ways, made me a better person and that I'm more open to experiences, I'm more open to other people's opinions, and I think with, it's a funny thing with education, and I know we've spoken about this before, is those who are educated know how much they don't know, mm. whereas people mm. who aren't educated think they know everything because they don't fully understand the breadth and the depth of everything that exists in this world that you don't understand. And I think that that's fine. Like I. I know in myself that I could live to 100 years old and I still wouldn't even know, like I would know a lot, but I wouldn't know everything. But I'm fine with that. That's, that's, not, that's not a bad thing in any way, shape or form. But I think understanding that you don't know everything, I think is also a very mm. important um, quality to have um, because it, <coughs> it, it breeds itself to a lot of other kind of really negative qualities if you are someone who thinks that you do know everything oh you know? absolutely but also building on that it also I, I guess it like when you start to realize what you don't know you start to realize that there's like a breadth of knowledge that like if you choose to like you can learn like if you realize like even if you look at something you already know a lot about say um say you're into uh, say you're into like space or something like that like the more you learn about it the more you realize there's areas about this thing that i already know so much about mm. there's even more that i haven't learned yet and, and there's if you even find more that really again that nobody understands and yeah, yeah you know um if you find that interesting like you can always like pursue that and like keep like learning more yeah. about whatever 100 percent. and like it, it's funny that you oh, say like yeah. space and stuff like that because that is something that i find super interesting and matthias recently lent me astrophysics for people in a hurry by uh, neil degrasse tyson which book. is so good i read it in like three days it was honestly amazing um We're at, space funding <laughs> and I NASA just got a burst. Oh, uh, did they? Yeah. Uh, Not enough for space the suits. We've <laughs> only been yeah. to the moon. <laughs> Haven't been to the moon in the last 20 years. Oh, I don't think a lot's changed since then, eh? Nah. Nah, let's, so hoot, let's hoot to the moon. <laughs> nah, it's, the moon's cool, actually. <laughs> I mean, it does a lot. It's <laughs> important. <laughs> let's. <laughs> Can we get rid of the moon? Yeah. Any, any issues with that? <laughs> any objections? We'd have no tides. That would be problematic. Yeah. yeah. Or, you know, night. No? That's, no. Yes? No. Well, no, life. No, we'd still be night. It'd still be night. No. Also, the Earth wouldn't be on a tilt because we think mm. that um, the formation of the moon yeah. was 
due to a, a really large collision that shifted the mm. rotation and tilted. But what if it already that's already, already tilted and then we just blew out the moon? True. It's already there. Yeah. The moon's already done what we need it to. We have no more need for the moon. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's still still tides. No, yeah, we, we value the moon. If moon, if you're watching, we love you. Um, <laughs> But yeah, no, I, <laughs> moving it back to, um, yeah, no, I, I do think that education is so important, but I do also think that when I was in high school, I didn't have the appreciation for it that uh, I do now. Mm. Like, 100%, e even though, like, a lot of the knowledge that I value now, I got in high school. It, it's not that what I've learned now um, is more valuable to me, because I am so aware of that, that at the same time, what I learned in high school gave me the foundations to do what I wanted later on or to um, be able to understand more in depth, more complex concepts or ideas or theories or models or whatever it is that it is. Um, I couldn't understand that without having done what I did in high school. Yeah. So I definitely think that value is really there as, like, there as well, even though I didn't see it when I was in high school. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it, it is really, it is quite interesting. I don't know, it, it's quite interesting how, like, the things we often, like, find the most value in, in life are the things we often spend the least time thinking about. Yeah, oh, 100%. Like, you don't realise, like, how much you enjoy learning until, like, I don't know, like, hypothetically say, like, you just, like, cut off yourself from, like, all learning experience, which is a very hard thing to do in reality. Mm. But, like, what, when you, like, stop, like, when you stop going to school or you stop doing something that you really enjoy, it's only then where you start to realise a lot of the time, like, how much value you got out of it. Yeah, 100%. What, what was your, like, perceptions of education when you were in high school? Like, did you see a lot of value in it, or...? Um, yeah, I, I think that I did. I think that I didn't appreciate being forced to have to learn stuff. Yeah. Um, and in hindsight, I shouldn't have been so resistive to that. I think that the New Zealand curriculum is the way that it is, like, for a pretty good reason. That we need this, these wider set of skills that maybe we don't necessarily want to learn in the moment like how to write a good essay, um, things like that, that we look back in hindsight and realise are actually really valuable. Mm. Um, Hindsight's twenty twenty, isn't it? Yeah. But I was very lucky. My parents valued education a lot and always like, pushed me to learn and stuff. So yeah, that was cool. <laughs> I definitely think you touched on a good point there, though. Like when a task becomes like obligatory, we do really like turn off doing it regardless of whether or not we would have found joy in it if we'd done it voluntarily yeah, like definitely. as soon as it's mandatory we're like oh we don't want to do it anymore like you know i know you love skating but if someone told you you have to skate for like i don't know like from 9 30 until 3 30 every day like after a while you'll probably be like if i got paid for it i would be dead <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, like you didn't get skaters like dream you didn't get paid though yeah because that's not yeah, school no that like wouldn't be fun yeah. or after a while like it might be fun at first but after a while that element of this is something i have to do i think begins to sort of um taint i guess the attitudes that people yeah. have towards those kind of things i don't know which do i guess that's a good segue is Something that I found useful for mitigating um, feeling disillusioned with stuff that you have to learn at university is finding something that you're interested in that sort of sits around that. So like mm -hmm. reading around the subject, figuring out what you're interested in around that mm. and then pursuing that. And it makes it a lot more um, like you're self-motivated to do it as opposed to just like doing it because you have to. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Did you have know, something to add? No. No? No. no? I, I know I looked as if I did, but... Anyway, so yeah, the, the things that we've, um, we asked from everyone today, yeah, wasn't really so much questions, but I thought they were some like really cool points and um, some of them we've kind of touched on, some of them we haven't quite, so um, anything that we haven't, um, we'll probably end up yarning about for a wee bit, but um, a lot of people said um, something to the effect of, um, they appreciate what they value in school is that they can see how it will take them to places later on in life. Like, it's, <clears throat> it helps them build their future path and from that they can, like, they have that autonomy, they have those decisions 
available to them because mm. of education. Yeah. Yeah? Is that like... I think it can be pretty difficult to figure out where something leads to. Mm. And I think that you'll often be surprised when past learning pops up in something that you didn't yeah. expect it to. Oh, yeah. yeah. But it's always really good as well, because then you can like say, wow, I do know something about this, and then you can yeah. engage in some discussion. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Like, you can contribute to something rather than just, I don't know, feeling like you're being talked at, for example. Yeah, and definitely, like, you'd, you'd be, you'd definitely, like, picking off that, you'd definitely be surprised, like, how much a lot of stuff, like, interrelates or is, like, the same... It's like a different version of the same thing. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, 100%. And I think that's also with that thing of, like, all disciplines are so interconnected. Like, every everything relates to each other, even if you don't think it does. Every subject that you take, like, can be connected to any other subject that you take. And um, I think because they're separated as these, like, discrete topics and subjects, even between the sciences, I know... Um, like in some of my students, I don't know um, if, if in, you see this and notice this in any of yours as well. Um, like between even just like chemistry and bio or like chemistry and physics or something like that, um, we can be applying the same concept um, in a, a slightly different lens and students feel like they have to learn it all over again. Like it's a completely new topic, but it's like, well, you learned it in this context use these same rules and just apply it to a different area. Yeah, and I think that you should always have that in mind when you're learning something new, is where does this apply to things that I already know? Yeah. Um, and just like having a good sort of mental model for all of these ideas is, is pretty important, mm. especially in the sciences. Like, yeah. You can't separate physics and chemistry. Yeah. Or even something like um, maths and physics, for example. I know that I've had students that struggle to rearrange formulae in physics, but I've seen them do the exact same thing in maths. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I'm like, it's the same thing. Yeah. <laughs> it's just like when, when the letters in a, are in a different context, they find it difficult. Yeah, yeah. And, and that's, that's not a bad thing. Everyone struggles with that when they're first learning it. I think it's keeping that open mind to seeing those kind of connections. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. And almost like sometimes even like looking for those connections. Yeah. Because sometimes you don't like realise it at first, but after a while you realise like that these things are actually really similar or like even though these subjects are completely different, like... They rely on each other. They rely on each other or yeah. like they have the same kind of processes and stuff like that. Yeah, 100%. Um, Somebody mentioned getting high grades and then someone said qualifications and awards, but they said whoops at the end. Um, so I don't know if they knew <laughs> that that was something that like we would low key like not advocate for, but not I don't know. Um, Swipe left. It's, I mean, it's not to say that aiming for high grades and to get awards and stuff is bad. No. It's just that it's unsustainable. Mm. Like if it's a lot less resilient in the face of failure yeah. than being super stoked on maths or physics or English or yeah. history or classics. Because, and, and that's also because like later on in life you're not constantly going to have a carrot dangled in front of you as well. Mm. So like once... What was the last award you got? Oh. <laughs> um, it's 2019. This is the, the yeah, present I time. I don't even know. Damn. I don't think I've ever won it. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> I don't know. Mine would genuinely be back in high school. Oh, oh yeah. I lie. I got, mm. I think I got on the Dean's list in my first year of uni. Maybe? Is that something? I yeah. don't know. Weird flex, but okay. Yeah. But I didn't even know about it until one of my friends was looking through the list and said that my name was on it. I wasn't even notified about it. So, like, yeah. it wasn't even really an award to me because I got no satisfaction from it because A, I wasn't aiming for it. B, I didn't even really know it was something I had. So, I don't know that you could really consider it an award in, the, in that case. Yeah, and I think if you're like aiming for awards, it's yeah, you're just setting yourself up for disappointment. Mm. Especially if those don't fall through, mm. um, or if they do fall through, I'm I'm sorry, um, you know that it, it it it's like what you said. It's it's a bit of a fragile structure to which motivate yourself. Mm. Yeah. Should go for the pursuit of truth. Pursuit of pursuit truth. Ah, oh, truth. Ah, uh, yeah. <laughs> truth. Oof. Yeah. Capital T or little T? 
Let's not get into the semantics. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, so some, someone mentioned one. Patreon. It was um, the encouragement to be creative, which I thought was a really cool one. Yeah. And I thought, I thought that was um, really amazing. And that was something that none of us really touched on, but I'm sure it's something that we all appreciate as well, is the more we know, I think, the more we have to work with, I guess. Yeah. And I, th I think human creativity is probably going to become one of the most important characteristics that separate us from machines. Like, mm. it's very difficult to emulate human creativity, whereas it's very easy to emulate, uh, like, repetitive tasks. Yeah. Um, machines are very, very good at that. Mm. So I think, creati like, striving to be creative and trying to find a creative outlet in your learning is going to be a critical skill in the future, for sure. Yeah, 100%. And I think it really links to, um, you know, your personality and the person that you want to be as well. And I think um, kind of ties a little bit into, like, what I was saying right at the beginning. Like, you know, it makes you more open to experiences and makes you um, have more to work with in, like, your own mind repertoire, which wasn't a good sentence, but that's fine. <laughs> I like that, mind repertoire. <laughs> um, and, and because of that, I think that's, re like, yeah, I just, it's, it's good. That I was a little life folder on your desktop. It's, it's like work and then just a life folder. <laughs> Everything just, else. Just got to keep it together, man. Yeah. <laughs> um, and, yeah, like, I feel like a lot of people, like, they have creative thoughts and, like, like they think it would be cool to like do more creative work and they'll like think of like ideas and stuff. Mm. But like a lot of people don't like go through with them. Yeah. And like realizing that like there's nothing stopping you from like right now, you have like two hours this afternoon before dinner, after school, I don't know, whatever. Like if you want to, like you can like if you have like an idea for like something, you can like write something, you can like make a video and you can like like you can do stuff to like enhance that and you can like play yeah. with your creatively, creatively, creativity, creativity all of the time in like all sorts of different contexts. Yeah. yeah, 100%, 100%. I think that's one of the most frustrating things for me with my math students is like people, and people like just the general public when talking about maths. Disclaimer, like, Matthias loves maths. Yeah, I'm real into maths. Like people <laughs> think that it's not a creative pursuit. Maths. What did you say? <laughs> He loves whispering like shady comments into True. the mic. Okay. I'll ignore that. <laughs> like you can you can even be creative in maths, for example, which seems like a non that seems ridiculous to most people. Counterintuitive, I would argue. Yeah. But, yeah. yeah, like people assume that it's not creative, but I think that you can find creative outlets in, in anything. Mm. Um and maths is no exception. Yeah. Well, the thing is, creativity is required in any discipline if it's expected to go forward. True. Mm. How, how is it that somebody's supposed to um, want to learn something or identify something or, um, you know, try to make something better if they don't have that element of creativity there? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and creativity... Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Creativity is like really clear to see in like creative industries like film, television, where like you can see over 10 years like people have made these like really significant stylistic changes. Yeah. But you can apply those sort of things like people didn't just decide like like there wasn't like before like people started, I don't know, what's like a, what's a, what's a good trend? If you've ever watched R Riverdale, they use like heaps of like colored lights. Like in the background. And literally so like one day some, yeah, I, I don't know, that's what the kids are into these days. Oh, okay, uh, trying to keep up. Uh, but like one day like someone just decided what would it look like if we like show, like shone, shone, uh, it's a good shone. Day for words. shone, lit up the background like with like these like really saturated colours. Like that's just a really random thing to think. Yeah. And like but people do that good. in creative, creative industries all the time and it looks good. But like you can do that sort of thing like and anything yeah well, the thing is yeah it's how are we supposed to pursue new ideas how can we be at the forefront of a discipline if we don't have thinkers there you know people who are wanting to you know endeavor to help find that truth you know yeah. thinking a little bit differently 100 percent. yeah i gotta go okay bye everyone bye thank you for joining us it's all good We'll just leave the chair there. <laughs> It'd be too much of a mesh to move anyway.
Are you just oh, okay? Did that work? Yes. Kind of. Just mostly. You turn in and then. That weirded me out. <laughs> Awesome. Okay, so some of the other things that you guys mentioned was um, understanding. Man, I love Easter eggs. <laughs> Can we have more? I think they're all out. I think they're all out. Sorry, man. Yeah, I'll go buy some more after work. Maybe do it. You can. You're, you're your own man. I'm an adult. Now. You're grown. You can do I that. Can buy about Easter eggs. Yeah. Um, so somebody else mentioned they what they really enjoy about the um, or value in the education is. Um, seeing how it directly applies to their life and it directly, they can see how everything in their life is the culmination of, um, you know, people, um, or it's the culmination of education. Um, you're watching this on a device that's, you know, that's, that's an amazing thing. Um, your whole life is surrounded like you know when people like you know there's that, that like meme everyone always talks about when people talk about like how your smartphone's like more powerful than like like the like the Apollo rockets like that's not that's like not a joke like <laughs> the amount of like technology in like your pocket is like actually insane yeah like but think about all the things that little thing can do like all this you know like it's it's a camera, it's a light, it's a messaging system, it can access the internet, it can, like, you can, you can, like, literally, if you had the system in your home, you could change things in your home you via can, like, your yeah, phone. Yeah, you could, like, turn lights on and stuff like that. Yeah. yeah. Like, it's just crazy. It can, yeah. like, reckon, I can, like, push a button and it can literally, like, understand what I'm saying and text Mackenzie to do something. Yeah. Like it's 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 crazy. Call Mackenzie. Okay, Google. No, 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 I don't want that. Hey Siri. I'm here. Can you call Siri for me? Call McKin Call McKenzie. Oh no! Brown. Don't see Siri in your contacts. Ah, they oh. heard your name is Sarah. Is Sounds like racism to me. <laughs> call McKenzie Grant. Mm -hmm. Mackenzie Grant, mobile. That took way too long. That was not a good that demonstration was not a good example, of but <laughs> the quality of modern technology. Yeah. Like, it's pretty crazy. Um, yeah, so... Um, oh, wow. My number's not even saved on your phone. I feel so valued. <laughs> I meant to save it the other day and I forgot. I feel like such a special person now. You are a special person. Oops. Um... <laughs> Yeah, anyway, it's, it's crazy and seeing how anything works, even if you were, like, it doesn't have to be technology, yeah. you know, it's just understanding how the tides work or understanding how it was that we um, understood that it takes 365 days, more or less, to make a full, um, you know, rotation around the sun. Yeah. Um, that it takes about roughly 24 hours for the moon to go around. You know, like, it's, it's, oh, for, no, 24 no. 24 hours? Wow. No, I lied. Sorry. Wow. Was, no, for the Earth to spin on its own axis, that was, yeah, thank you. Um, but, like, understanding that kind of stuff is amazing. Yeah. And seeing how it directly applies to your life is so amazing as well. Um, someone mentioned um, satisfaction in understanding things. And mm. I think that's really important as well because, like, I, I get probably, like, overly excited when I'm like oh my god look at this thing and I understand it without someone having to explain it to me beforehand oh no totally because I have this prior knowledge and I think that's so important and, and being, it's so worthwhile being able to understand things that you like didn't know about like a few months ago or like mm. a year ago is really amazing yeah 100%. it'll also drive you nuts when you look at your old work and see you didn't understand how color worked properly two years ago <laughs> oops I um, love a bit of hue, saturation, luminance. Some camera <laughs> jokes for you all, for our, for our photography audience out there. <laughs> um, somebody also said um, it gives them the ability to um, take control of their future or they feel like they would have a better say in what they can do in their lives later on mm. um, because of that. And um, to tie into something that somebody else said, it ties into being able to like follow your passion if um, that is through like a job thing and your passion doesn't have to be your job by the way um just is it but it can it, be it can be and it can be through yeah. education um 
and also to be able to like provide for a family or something like that, you know. And that's like that's I know, you, <laughs> but like that, that's the thing though. Like is there's knowing, so many possibilities. Exactly, and yeah. that's just it. Endless, endless possibilities. Mm, mm. Um, and the last two things that um, people mentioned was learning how to think critically. And I think that mm. is incredibly, yeah, no, I, I, incredibly important. And that's not something that you would learn in a specific standard or a specific subject. It's a skill that you cultivate over your like years you of can, education. And it's something you will continuously be able to do, like build on. Like, I'm still learning how to be better at it. Like, yeah, like you can, so like if, if you think about like, like learning like knowledge and being able to recall facts like you can like you can google information yep. you can't like google how to like critically analyze something in real time no. on something like really specific and that's like a really useful skill that like 100%. is actually applicable through all areas of life that is a very interesting slate message what <laughs> <laughs> that was after the <laughs> <laughs> Um, but yeah, no, I, and I think that is so important as well, is um, being able to think critically is a crazy important, like, it's mad important. And um, for anyone that, like, when, when we say, um, like, thinking critically, it's, it's being able to weigh up two sides of an mm. argument or multiple points of view or stuff like that. Or think it's, about things that haven't been thought about. Exactly. It's... It's not taking things at face value. It's yeah. not just being told something and taking it as gospel. It's being... Here's a pro like, tip. Never uh, recite a dictionary definition at a beginning or like in an essay ever. Do just people like, do don't. that? I've never done that before. Oh, people do that. That's like definitely a thing. That's like a, that's like a classic sign that you're going to see like an essay with like some real surface level thinking. Right. Is when someone like recites a dictionary well, it, definition. It would, be like, it would be like getting all your research from an encyclopedia. <laughs> yeah. Also don't do that. It's, it's like, it's a starting place, but it's not an end point. It's, oh, it's not a, a dictionary is not a starting place. No, no, no. I was talking about an encyclopedia. Oh, yeah. Who uses encyclopedias in 2019? Nobody. Exactly. Like, do they still exist? They I was, it look, I was making a point. Do you remember the world book at high school? That's like this Yeah, one. yeah, yeah. That was, that was an interesting experience. Were those ever open? Uh, not by me. <laughs> <laughs> Neither. Um, but they were there. They were there. And we knew they were there. And they had pretty covers that all matched up together. They looked like they had stuff on there that would be important. Yeah. You know, and, it's a very and I just book. had to trust that. It's a meter long book. That's crazy. Um, the last I wonder if they're still a oh. thing. I'm sure they are. I'm sure they're lurking around. If you have a world book, let us know in the comments at Please. your school. Just tell me. I'm just curious to know if they still exist. Okay. Um, the last thing that... Come steal it. The last <laughs> thing that somebody said was um, the opportunity to better myself. And I think that was kind of what I was saying right at the beginning mm. as well, is I feel like... And one thing I would also like to add uh, with this is not pursuing further education doesn't mean that you're like going to be a bad person or oh, that no, you don't no, no, possess no. any of these qualities <laughs> just by the way um but it helps it really really helps and it's something that um if we can critically think if we can see how things connect to each other kind of almost like a side effect of that is we will become better people. Not necessarily better as in we become like, you know, like saints or anything like that, but we become better in that we have a better understanding of the world, we have a better understanding of people, we have a better understanding of society. Mm. And I, with that, we can make more informed decisions on our own lives. Yeah, I, I think that thing about like actually like having better, like learning more about people and how people work is like really important. Mm. I, I've never read it. But there's a good book, on the, I, I'm endorsing a book I've never read, but there's a good book, called, it's called like Making, Making Free, oh, I'll Google it. Um, but like, like learning how people work like over time and like actually like really improve, like makes it like a lot easier to like have stronger relationships with your friends and the people you already know and mm. makes it easier to like meet new people get along with people in challenging situations like yep. when you go to work or when you go to a university group project like you're gonna have to get you're gonna have to like make things work with people you might not get along with but yep. like being able to um like bring a positive mindset to that and understand how people work and make that whole situation work is like mm. really valuable and you just learn that by like 
over time, like just mm. just learning how people work. I think it's I think it's a like it, it's a bit of a flow on. Like if you understand people better, you can understand their world views. You can understand where they're coming from. That doesn't necessarily mean that you have to agree with it, and that doesn't necessarily mean that it, anything is right or wrong, um, because that's an ambiguous term at best. But it means that you have an understanding of their perspective and you can have a respect of that and you can know, I think you are able to, better able to get along with people when you can understand them more. And if you aren't open to experiences, if you aren't open to learning more, if you aren't open to having those kind of discussions, then um, when, when you are met with some sort of um, uncomfortable situation if you have to work with someone that you maybe don't want to or uh, if you have to um, meet people for the first time or something like that you are better able to cope with that situation because I think with that understanding comes like a respect or an, a sympathy for that the book I'm talking about is called how to win friends and influence people I've never read it but sounds I like pseudo it's, psych. it's not a science book pseudo psych but the, I feel pseudo-psych like, implies that it's not science. Yeah, but I feel like pseudo-psych implies that they're trying to be science. Pseudo? Mm. Pseudo is just like pop. Like just I like, understand what pseudo means, but I feel like when you say something pseudo-science, it implies that they're trying to be science, but they're no, not. No, I'm saying it's pseudo-psych, not pseudo-science. No, I don't think it's trying to be psych. But you haven't read the books, so you <laughs> I mean, I haven't either, so I really, like, I don't have... Both of our corners in this debate are very much lacking. Let's just, let's settle it with that. Um, but yeah, I guess that, that was kind of it from us this week. Yeah, do you have a thought of the week? A thought of the yeah, week? Yeah, what's been on your mind? Um, I what's feel like been? I've had, like, a really up and down week. Like, yeah. Monday was really blur. Tuesday was, like, really good. And mm. then today, oh, yesterday was, like... Yesterday was good, but I felt like I was just like walking through mud the entire day. You know what I mean? Like we just yeah. feel everything's like slow. Today's been good. Today's yeah, like oh, I think good. I've been a little bit behind on things, but yeah. it's it's been good. So I think okay, no, sorry, that was that was really long winded. I think my thought of the week, off the bat of that, is um, like take everything one day at a time, and just because you had one day a day doesn't mean you can have a bad week, and yeah. just because you have. Uh, you know, a bad experience, it doesn't even mean that it can ruin your day. Yeah, like, I, I'm playing off that a little bit. I definitely think there's, like, this idea that people think, like, like, I've already made, like, so many bad decisions, like, like I've already had Maccas, like, ten times this month, might as well have it again. Yeah. And there's, like, nothing stopping you from being, like, today is going to be the day that I don't do that. Mm. And that applies to, like, anything. Like, you can change, like just because you know you haven't been good about something or you haven't stuck to your goal like for 100 days this year or 200 days this year or 1000 days of your life like there's nothing stopping you from making a change towards it today yeah i like um, that and do you have any other thoughts i don't know i've been going to the gym in the morning which is an interesting experience i used to do that oh actually here's my thought of the week um there's no such thing as not having you never tell yourself, I don't have time. There's never, it, I'm there's not never, making it a priority. There's never, any, there's never such a thing as like, I don't have time. You're not making, tell yourself. Next time you want to say, I don't have time, say, it's not a priority. And if it's not a priority for you, that's fine. That's but fine. if you like keep thinking, I should do this, and you keep saying, it's not a priority, it's not a priority. But if it's actually a priority, then you need to reassess the way you're spending your time. Yeah. I think, I think that's very worthwhile. Yeah, yeah 100%. Um, yeah, is that mm. it from us this week? I believe so. I'm, I've eaten too much chocolate today. I'm mm. quite tired now. I want to sleep, but I have contacts and I can't be bothered taking them out. Yeah, I noticed you were wearing them before. Yeah. Um, if there was any highlights from this that you guys uh, really enjoyed or thought was really important or... Um, uh, yeah, I'm going to finish that sentence there. Um, <laughs> then please give us some timestamps. Um, if you have any ideas for future episodes, please let us know. And there was another one, I. Eh? There's a third bit. Is there a third thing that we... Is there? I don't know. Bye. Okay.